favorite colors. My very favorite color is purple. There are not a lot of things that are purple. Some grapes are purple. Sometimes the sky looks purple. My second favorite color is blue. Some things are blue. The sky is blue, and water is blue. Many people have blue eyes. Green is a very common color in nature. Trees are green in the summer. Some trees are green all year long. Grass is green. Sometimes water looks green. Many people have green eyes. Many vegetables are green: broccoli, cabbage, beans, lettuce, peas, and cucumbers are all green. Green vegetables are very good for you. Yellow is a bright color. The sun looks yellow. Bananas are yellow. Some people have yellow hair. Daffodils and dandelions are yellow. White is a common color, especially in the winter. Snow is white. Clouds are white. Polar bears, some dogs, and some cats are white. There are white flowers that grow. Some flowers are red. Roses can be red. Blood is red. Sometimes the sky is red at night or in the morning. Artists use all these colors to make beautiful paintings. Nature used all these colors to make the beautiful earth. We are fortunate to be surrounded by beauty. We should do our part to make sure that nature stays beautiful and clean. Making friends. I used to be very shy. I would not go up to someone that I did not know and say hello. I was afraid that people would not want to talk to me. I have changed. I have become less shy. I have learned that making friends is easy to do. All you have to do is say hello. Most people will respond to a smile and a friendly hello. People will begin to talk to you about little things in their lives. You will soon realize that you have something in common with that person. Whenever I start talking to a new person, I find that there is some interest that we share. Maybe we know some of the same people, or we went to the same school. Often we find that we like the same music or the same movies. It is easy to have a conversation with someone once you find a topic that you can both relate to. The most important part in making friends is to listen to what the other person says. If you take an interest in them, they are sure to take an interest in you. I have learned many things from meeting people. I have had many fascinating conversations, and I have made a lot of good friends. One day, a girl came up to me and said that she was lost. She couldn't find her way to her English class. I said that I was going to that class too. I told her to come with me. We began talking, and we became very good friends. That was a few years ago. She is still one of my best friends. Just think, if she hadn't been lost, we might never have become friends. Getting old. My grandfather is getting old. When I was younger, my grandfather would carry me on his shoulders, and we would go for a walk. Now my grandfather cannot put me on his shoulders. He has a hard time walking, and he uses a cane. My grandfather used to have lots of hair. Now he is bald. His skin doesn't look like it used to. It is more wrinkled. My grandfather takes more naps than he used to. He goes to the doctors and takes pills for his heart. I love my grandfather very much. I don't like the fact that he is getting older. But my mother says that growing older is just a fact of life. She says that we will all get older. Sometimes my grandfather forgets things. My mother says to be patient. I am patient. I try to help my grandfather as much as I can. I sometimes go for walks with him. I help him to walk when he has trouble. I cheer him up if I think he might be sad. I get things for him. And I even read to him at night. 
He used to read to me when I was little. Now his eyesight is bad, and he can't see very well. My grandfather tells me stories about when he was a boy. The world was a very different place then. He tells me, his stories are interesting. Sometimes I wish we could trade places for a day so that I would know what it felt like to be old. My grandfather doesn't complain. He jokes about his old bones. I spend a lot of time with my grandfather. I hope that he is around for a long time. University Library. Well, first of all, welcome to the orientation tour of University Library. I'm David White, a library staff here. I know all of you are new students. You will probably need some sort of guidance to help you to use the library effectively for your studies and research. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the different parts and functions of the library. Now, let's start on a tour from the entrance here. As you can see, there are three floors. First of all, I will introduce you to the ground floor. There are three parts of the ground floor. The first one that we face now is the reception. It supplies library information to all visitors. As a new student, you should apply for your library card first before using the library resources. Remember to take one passport photo and your union card when you come here to register. Next to it is the computer section. On the right entrance, as you see, there are ten computers for students to search library resources, such as reference books. You can also search the library information by using your own laptop in the house, but you should get your username and password when you register in the computer center tomorrow. The last section on the ground floor. Is the leisure bar. We make sure there is no food or drink in our reading room. If you are hungry, you can go to the leisure bar on the corner of the ground floor. It is a relaxed place. Drinks and snacks are supplied there. The large section on the second floor, located in the center, is called the reference room. You will find all kinds of textbooks, literature materials. Or dictionaries in the room. Near to it is a small room called the closed reserve room. According to library rules, important reference books cannot be taken away from the library, so students have to sit in the closed reserve room to read. The room opposite to the closed reserve room is the periodical room. We offer various current or back newspapers. Magazines and journals. There is a small room called the audio-visual room next to it. You can find tapes or CDs, or watch videos in there. If you want to photocopy some materials, you can go to the photocopy room on the right corner beside the stairs. We offer five computers, four photocopiers, and four laser printers there. You should deposit money in your library card first, and then swipe your card before using the photocopier or printer. There are some rules. The first rule is that we do not accept coins. The second rule is to limit your session to half an hour at a time, when the photocopier is busy or the printer is busy. The last important rule is that please do not start printing less than ten minutes before the library closes. The reading room and meeting room are both located on the top floor. Now we are in the big reading room with a glass roof. As you see, it is very bright and quiet in here. You can read books while enjoying the sunshine. The last section I wish to introduce to you. Is the conference room. There are some different size rooms, with a round work table and multimedia equipment for teachers and students to do group work. Okay, 
let's talk about some warnings. First of all, you can reserve any reference book if they are on loan, but the available time is only 48 hours. If you cannot come to the reception to take your reserved books, you will miss out. Then, if your book is recalled by the library, you have to return it within seven working days. Otherwise, the book is overdue and you will have to pay a fine. The other thing is your library card. All records of using library resources are in your card. I hope you can keep your card safely. Especially, do not leave it in your student locker. If you lose it, please come to our reception to report the loss and apply for a new one in order to avoid further trouble. Good. Well, that's the end of the tour of the library. You can look around for yourselves now, and if you have any questions, please ask the advisor at the reception. British Holidays British celebrate many religious, historical, social and cultural holidays throughout the year. Some holidays marked on calendar are celebrated throughout the country. Others are based on local customs and traditions which reflect the variety of experience in different regions. Britain remains mainly a Christian nation, but most Britons do not go to church regularly or engage in Christian worship. Because of immigration and changing beliefs, most of the world's religions are practiced in Britain such as Hindu, Judaism, Muslim faith, and the Sikh. Christmas is the biggest and best-loved British holiday. While Christmas has a Christian meaning, it commemorates the birth of Jesus Christ. People usually celebrate Christmas by decorating homes and workplaces with colored lights and Christmas trees and ornaments and exchanging gifts. There are three traditional Christmas activities in Britain. One is the Christmas pantomime, a comical musical play. Another British Christmas tradition is to hear the Queen give her Christmas speech over television and radio. The British Queen is also the Queen of other nations, such as Canada and Australia, and so her speech is broadcast to millions of subjects throughout the world. The third British Christmas tradition, which is also celebrated in countries with British heritage, is Boxing Day, which falls on the day after Christmas. People used to give Christmas gifts or money to their staff on Boxing Day. However, a new Boxing Day custom has emerged. It is shopping. But for most people, it is a day of visiting, eating and relaxing. For churchgoers, the biggest holiday is Easter, not Christmas. It is the most important Christian festival in Britain. Easter commemorates the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Easter is in the spring when universities and schools are closed for breaks. During the Easter period, Christians attend many church services and charity activities. Easter eggs are the main symbol of Easter. As time goes on, nowadays people give each other chocolate or candy for Easter. There are some local festivals and holidays in England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. People can know about the different culture and customs of the four nations of the United Kingdom. Many festivals and customs have been invented, adopted and used to serve political or religious functions in times of conflict. Special days in England and Wales show their national pride in their unique languages and cultures and remind people that there is much more to the UK than the English and England. One truly English holiday in England is called Bonfire Night, celebrated in early November. English people celebrate this event in the traditional way. Small children with a straw effigy called The Guy appear on British streets. They beg for money from passing adults. They buy lots of fireworks to set off on Bonfire Night. Most communities have public bonfires where people gather to cook potatoes and sausages in the fire and watch fireworks performing. 
The biggest bonfires night celebration is held in the small medieval town of Luz, where torchlight parades wind through the narrow streets. Northern Irish Catholics celebrate the birthday of the patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick, on the 17th of March of each year. Patrick was a Catholic bishop who lived in the 5th century and is thought to have brought Christianity to Ireland. He lived in Great Britain, but was captured by Irish raiders and became a slave at the age of 16. He eventually escaped and returned to Britain. However, he accepted the invitation of the Irish and returned to Ireland to begin his successful missionary career. Most British people welcome the coming of the New Year. In Scotland, New Year's Eve is called Hogmanay. It is on the 31st of December and is the major winter celebration. But Christmas is very quiet. How Hogmanay is celebrated varies through Scotland. But one widely practiced custom is first footing. There is a superstitious belief that the first person to cross the threshold of a household in the new year can bring luck and prosperity. The appearance of a young, preferably dark-haired and handsome man is considered particularly lucky. First footers usually bring a bottle of alcohol, a lump of coal or a peat as a gift and given a dram of whiskey as their reward. Halloween, the 31st of October, is another Scottish festival that comes from the great feast of the pagan Celt. It is particularly connected to ghosts. At parties, people dress up in strange costumes and pretend that they are witches. They cut horrible faces in pumpkins and put a candle inside which shines through the eyes. Children dressed in white sheets knock on doors at Halloween and ask if you would like a trick-or-treat. Usually hosts give them something nice, such as coins or candy. Otherwise, they make lots of noise at the front door. Wales has some of the oldest and richest literary, musical and poetic traditions in Europe. The most famous festival in Wales is the Eisenford. In each August, Welsh people hold a large Eisenford to remind people that Wales has had a very special cultural heritage. The highlight of the festival is to crown the two bards who have written the best poems of the festival. Nowadays, the Ace of Ford is the largest popular festival of music making poetry and writing in Europe. The British calendar is full of holidays and festivals which show the different cultures and histories of the people who make up Britain. Such holidays and festivals not only remind people of how cultures change and influence each other, but also give people a chance to share in the rich cultural heritage of the United Kingdom.